Hi, this is Russ Anderson. In this tutorial, I'm going to show a technique that's useful for working with point clouds, which might be several hundred trackers from an auto track or millions of vertices from a LiDAR scan. So in this particular tutorial, we're going to work with a LiDAR scan. So just open that up as a mesh. And it's a large mesh with no, no triangles, no faces. So we need to just straighten it out a little bit. It comes in and was generated with a little bit of a tilt to it for some reason. And the web page cites the university that generated this particular scan. The name I can't particularly pronounce. So let's go look at it now in the perspective window. You have a whole lot of points. Now we're going to set it as an edit mesh so that we can play around with the vertices a bit. And you'll see now we've got a whole lot of points. They're pretty large when we've got this many points. So let's go to the perspective view and we're just going to change the display side size down to a smaller value. That makes it a little easier to play around with. So we'll just set up some points there to start with and you know what you see immediately as I start to go and select some vertices and we're going to go do something down here so I go and select them but you wind up selecting vertices all the way through the point cloud there's no no structure to it so I have vertices here on the front face of the actual object and then I have faces all the way through to the back. So the technique that I'm going to show you is how to control exactly what vertices get selected in this process. So to do that, we're going to go over to the front view. The whole mesh is selected, so I'm just going to unselect it. Now you see that the selected vertices are shown in, in red here also. And I'm going to create a plane in that general area. And you might have noticed the image kind of just shimmering a little as, as I was doing that. And that's just an artifact of the kind of software renderer that's being used here and it's just the result of different ties in the render being resolved depending on which processors which of the cores finishes first. So let's go now to the top view and here are selected vertices back there. Here's the plane that we just created so let's just go and we're going to move it back there right kind of into the thick of things and now I'll spin it around a little bit to align it with that front face. And move it back. And now we can go back into the perspective view. Now you see there's the plane. I'm just unselecting it. You'll see it's kind of sitting between the front face of this stairs there that you can now see and I guess it's a parking garage of some kind. You still got all the other selected vertices in the back. And you'll notice that we're only showing the front faces of the plane here. We could show the back if we wanted to. So now we're just going to redo a vertex select and if I orbit around, now you see that we've only selected vertices on the front and none on the back. So this is actually a literal clipping plane. You have here a clipping planes, near clipping plane, far clipping plane. Those aren't actual physical entities. Here we've created a physical mesh and we're using it as a clipping plane to control what parts of the selection process, this lasso selection, 
you know, what, what part of that is being used, what, where that process stops. So I could actually add multiple clipping planes into the scene as well and hone in on some particular area that I'm working with. And as you see, it, it helps not only control what the particular set of vertices that get selected, and it also helps actually visualize a little and cut out the clutter in the back. Now, I will point out that this process continues to work also. If you switch to a wireframe mode, and now I can go and select things, and the, the clipping plane is still in effect even though it's not being shown as a solid object. So it's a useful technique for working with LiDAR data, working with tracker collections, a tracker cloud that you've created that maybe has a terrain model and you're trying to build up something like that into a nice mesh. So enjoy. I hope you find that a useful technique.